Okay, to continue our discussion on basic uh, math of investment. Uh, I hope uh, by now you are already familiar with the simple interest uh, formula, is I equals uh, PRT. And although simple interest is uh, useful in many ways, but in most uh, instances, um, simple interest uh, actually is not applicable in a sense that, uh, for example, when you invest something, uh, normally uh, the investment the scheme uh, includes the uh, interest earned uh, for, uh, let's say, for uh, after one year that interest earned from your initial amount is being added to the uh, principal amount. Therefore, the following year, you will have a new principal amount or initial value. Okay. So the idea of compound interest uh, is that uh, your total amount after one year that means uh, your initial amount plus the interest earned becomes the new principal amount. So you're going to use the new principal amount as your basis okay, in computing the interest uh, to be earned for, for that uh, following year. Okay? So this is what we call uh, compound interest. And this is the difference between simple interest and uh, compound interest. So for compound interest, um, we, we can divide this into three cases. The first case actually is uh, the case where compounding is done uh, once a year, or we call this uh, compounding annually. Uh, for this uh, case, the uh, total amount, which we denote by S, is uh, obtained by using this formula. S equals uh, P times one plus R uh, raised to T. Okay. Here P is of course the principal amount, right? Um, T is time, okay? R is uh, the rate of interest. So that's uh, when we, we compound uh, once a year. The second case is when compounding is done uh, several times uh, in a year, okay? So if it is done uh, several times in a year, then we compute the total amount by uh, using the formula S equals uh, P times one plus R over N uh, quantity raised to NT, where uh, again, P is the principal amount, R is the rate of interest, N is the uh, T is the time. What about N? N here refers to the number of times uh, compounding is done okay, in a year. The third case is when compounding is done uh, continuously. In other words, uh, um, you are it is similar to compounding n times per year, but uh, the idea is the number of compounding uh, is at regular interval. And uh, I think uh, I would say the number of times no, of compounding uh, approaches uh, a very, very large number, okay? When, when if, if that's the case, then the total amount, okay, when compounding is done continuously, uh, approaches uh, the value P times E to the RT, okay? Again, P here is your principal amount, R is the rate of interest, and T is the time. Uh, and we're using now a new, this is not actually a variable because this is a constant. No? Uh, this is an Euler number. 
the value of which is uh, approximately 2.71, okay? But that's an irrational number. We call that an Euler number or transcendental number. So we use that as the base, okay? You multiply the principal amount with E, then raised to R T. Again, your S uh, refers to the total amount or the future value. T is the initial or principal amount. R is the interest rate. T is the time, okay, in years. And N is the number of times compounding is done in a year. Okay, let's illustrate this. Uh, let's start with the first case where compounding is done annually. Okay, take note of the formula. Um, for annual compounding, okay? So, uh, let's consider the first problem. Is suppose you invested 500 pesos that earns 10% uh, interest each year for three years, where each interest payment is reinvested at the same rate. What is the total amount of your investment at the end of three years? Actually, uh, we can uh, solve this problem by computing the interest earned uh, every year. No? But for the following year, in the second year, your, your initial amount would be uh, 500 plus the interest earned in the first year, okay? And then in the third year, uh, the new principal amount will be the amount, uh, uh, the total amount, okay? Your initial amount plus the interest earned in the first year and the interest earned uh, in the second year, uh, using the uh, new principal principal amount or initial value, but uh, instead of doing that, we'll just uh, use the formula here. Okay, S equals P times one plus R raised to. In other words, this formula actually is derived by using the idea that I uh, illustrated a while ago. Okay, so. Um, Given the formula, we can directly substitute or plug in the given values to this formula. But let's first identify the uh, given values okay, from the problem. First, we have 500 pesos, which is your P, that's initial amount, okay? 10% is your rate of interest. Three is your time. Okay, so we have the following quantities, okay, or values given. Now, we now use this formula. You can just substitute directly to the formula, okay. And we have this, okay. 500 is your P, uh, then 0.10, value of your R, and T is equal to 3, okay. And then using our calculator, uh, you should use a scientific calculator to make your computation easier. No? Okay. Uh, the calculator that allows you to compute uh, the expression with exponent. And using our calculator, we have uh, the amount no? at the end of three years is equal to 665.50 pesos. Okay? So that's how to determine the total amount uh, when using the compound interest, okay? And compounding is done once a year. 